Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, everyone. Nice to see you all here this morning. Um, we don't have too many announcements. I don't have too many announcements, but there are other announcements. I do want to uh, welcome Barb Graves here this morning, who will be playing along with Bobby on the piano and elevate our music life a little bit. So that's great. Um, any other announcements? OK, Norm, you're on. Go to the microphone, then they can hear you. You mean my stentorian voice is not out? To the microphone. People on the video can't hear you. OK, um, we've gotten good returns on the survey so far. Uh, I've been tabulating them, and there have been a few issues, primarily on the second section on gifts for ministry. Technically, they're looking for 10 different items, five top priority, five helpful. So you don't want to put the same number on both sides of the page. And I've run across several where you, the numbers it wasn't a number, it was just checked. So I can't weight them when it's just a check mark. So if you recall doing that, feel free to grab another copy from the front and fill it out. Everyone the, wants to do more. With actually the numbers. There were also at least three instances where only the first half was done and the second half was not. So if you remember having problems say downloading the second half, pick up one from the front and just do the second half and put it in because they're independent. It doesn't matter whose name, you know, there's no names on them anyway. Uh, so I'll, I'll just find a blank column and put it in. So they'll get counted. So we want to get as complete a response as possible. We're at about 50% so far, which I think is, is pretty good. Excellent. So. Um, Keep, keep doing it. Uh, today is technically the deadline, but we'll take them when they come in, even this week. Uh, if you have a problem, you know, email me, call me, and uh, we'll deal with it. Thank you. Thank you, Norm. Yeah, through the years, I've been on the other side of this process a few times and find myself saying, why is it taking so long? And I know when I've been interim pastor, many people say to me, why is it taking so long? There are a few, th and there are more steps to the process than anyone wants to know about. Um, but beyond that, the one thing that you can do to keep things moving as smoothly and quickly as possible is to fill out this questionnaire, okay? And as honestly and simply as you can, omit the walks on water under qualities needed in a pastor. You're not going to find them. Uh, he's not available, but you know, just fill it out, get it in, and then the call committee can get on to the next step and the next. But this is the one thing where the congregation can help move things along, so do it. <laughs> okay, let us give our attentions to the prayer line.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This holy house, our washroom. 
Let us pray. Glorious God, your generosity waters the world with goodness, and you cover creation with abundance. Awaken in us a hunger for the food that satisfies both body and spirit, and with this food fill all the starving world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. This first reading this morning is from the 55th chapter of Isaiah. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear, and come to me. Listen, so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you, because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm this morning is Psalm 145. Please respond in the bold print. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. Lord, you are good to all, and your compassion is over all your works. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. You are righteous in all your ways and loving in all your works. You are near to all who, I, who call upon you and to all who call upon you faithfully. You the desire of those who fear you. You hear their cry and save them. You watch over all those who love you, but all the wicked you shall destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord, and let all flesh bless God's holy name.
The second reading this morning is from Romans, the ninth chapter. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus heard about the beheading of John the Baptist, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, this is a deserted place and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to the disciples, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. And they replied, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And Jesus said to them, bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds and all ate and were filled. And they took, what was, took up what was left over from the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men besides women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I know you didn't sign up for this, but I'm going to ask you to use your minds for a second this morning and do some imagining. I know it's a lot to ask early in the day, but imagine it's Thanksgiving. Okay, it should not be hard to imagine a nice, cool time of year. It's Thanksgiving and you're going to be alone, but an acquaintance invites you to their home for dinner. And so you go and you sit down at the table and they bring out a steaming platter of lasagna. <laughs> okay, I take it for your response. You've imagined that that's not right. We're supposed to have turkey for Thanksgiving. Nobody in my family likes turkey, but we have turkey every year for Thanksgiving. And it's not just turkey, but we need all of the traditional trimmings that go with it. And they fare better than the turkey at our table. Now, lasagna isn't bad. It would certainly fill our stomachs. It would satisfy our hunger. It would meet most of our nutritional requirements. But as much as we might like lasagna, it's not what we're supposed to have on Thanksgiving. Food not only fills our stomachs, our choice of food says something about our identity. Part of our American identity is that we eat Thanksgiving, we eat turkey on Thanksgiving, just like the pilgrims did in Plymouth, Massachusetts. Of course, don't go to the Pilgrim's Colony in Plymouth because there they'll tell you they may not have had turkey. But they definitely had lobster because they had so many lobsters they didn't know what to do with them. So be glad you're not buying lobster to feed a crowd. Imagine again 
celebrating your birthday by taking a cupcake and putting a candle in it and lighting it and singing happy birthday to me. Again, it doesn't cut it. It's not just that a cupcake is too scale down a version of a birthday cake. It's that the right people aren't there. To make it a party, you have to have at least one more loved one around. The right food is a good start, but it needs to be shared with the right people. Food that we prepare can create or mend or strengthen our relationships with those with whom we share it. So we share our birthday cake with a friend. We eat Thanksgiving dinner with loved ones. Food is an incredibly powerful symbol for all of us. If you don't believe that, go on a diet and you'll find out how powerful food is. Food not only satisfies our hunger, it strengthens our relationships. It identifies who we are. And throughout scripture, the food that is mentioned most often, Old Testament and New, is bread. Heard it in this morning's first lesson and in the gospel. It's one of the most basic foods. You know, it satisfies a lot of our nutritional needs. It certainly feeds the body, but it also feeds the soul. It feeds us in a way that random food just can't. Think back to the meanings bread has had in scripture. Think of the time, the 40 years, the Israelites wandered in the wilderness on their way to the promised land. God gave them manna every morning. Well, six mornings a week, Sunday, or excuse me, the Sabbath, Saturday, God took the day off, um, but they were allowed to gather two, two days worth of food the day before. Every day for 40 years, people ate manna, this bread-like substance. It not only fed their bodies, obviously it kept them alive for 40 years, it also fed their souls. It reminded them of God's goodness for them, of God's ability and willingness to provide. Do you remember the story of the widow of Zarephath? She was a poor woman, just her and her young son, in a time of famine. And the prophet Elijah knocks on her door and says, give me some bread. <laughs> and the woman says, well, I'll tell you what, I've got a small measure of flour and a little cruet of oil, and I'm about to use them to make bread so that my son and I may eat our last meal and then die. And Ezekiel says, I'll take some of that. <laughs> and she shares with him. And after the three have shared bread, every morning, this widow found that her measure of flour had been renewed and her cruet of oil had more oil in it. God's will provided for them. Think of Abraham and Sarah as they're sitting under the oaks at Mamre. They're visited by three angels unaware. And Sarah entertained them, brought them food, a meal with plenty of bread. And at that meal, those angels who they just thought were three strangers confirmed for them that Abraham would be the father of a great nation, have so many descendants that'd be as great as the sands that covered the beach. Of course, that caused Sarah to have a hearty laugh because she and Abraham were both in their 90s, so she knew better than God. <clears throat> yeah, good luck with that. All of these special meals showed people who God is. And in today's gospel, 
we hear the same thing again. Did you know that the story of the feeding of the 5,000 is the only miracle that occurs in all four Gospels? Now, that doesn't mean it's more true. It just means that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, whoever those people were who brought these Gospel stories together, all felt that this was an important story for us to know. And so they included it. There's something also unusual that happens here. Each of these the, each of these stories, each of these stories of the feeding of the 5,000 includes some special verbs that we don't hear too often in combination. We only hear here and one other place. And those verbs are took, blessed, broke, and gave. Jesus here at this feeding of the 5,000, is doing exactly what he will do in the night in which he is betrayed. When he took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body. In telling the story of the feeding of the 5,000, Matthew is helping us to connect our eating together with our eating at the Lord's table. The 5,000 who received bread by the sea were the same as the 12 who will gather in the upper room with Jesus the night before his death. The meals they ate were signs and seals of the relationship these people had established with Jesus and their identity as belonging to Jesus. They knew that the giver of the bread, Jesus, is in fact God. Just as they knew that it was God who had given the people of Israel manna, bread, in the wilderness. This food by the sea is a sign of God's love and care and God's presence with them. It reminds them of God's goodness in the past. It reveals Jesus as the Son of God and it strengthens the people's relationship with Jesus at that present moment. As we come around the Lord's table this morning, None of us comes alone. Oh, you may have walked through the door by yourself. You may be sitting by yourself. But as we take our place at the table, we're with Abraham and Sarah, with Elijah, with Moses, with the people of Israel in the wilderness. Our dinner companions are the saints and apostles and prophets and martyrs the 5,000 who ate with Jesus by the sea, as well as the 12 disciples in the upper room. Eating this meal of bread and wine, we remember our identity as Jesus' followers, and we renew our relationship with Jesus and with all of the faithful and we become companions. That's a word we use fairly easily. Those who do things with someone else. But it has a, a deeper root in the Latin. Lord be with them. In the Latin it's companius, with bread. A companion is one who shares bread with us. We become companions with one another as we share Jesus' bread this morning. And so we are companions on our way to Christ's promised kingdom where Jesus tells us we will feast with him forever. Amen.
stand as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. <clears throat> Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, for those in need, and for all of creation. You gather your church together by the Holy Spirit. Inspire all the baptized to proclaim your abundant love throughout the world. Guide us in the mission of the gospel through word and deed. Hear us, O God. You cherish your creation from the smallest microbe to the largest mountain. Protect fragile ecosystems, send favorable weather, supply food and water to nourish creatures, and raise us up to care for all you have created. Hear us, O God. You desire peace and justice in the world. Instill within all political leaders your desire. Support the work of international peace organizations and provide relief for those in war-torn areas, especially Ukraine. Hear us, O God. You comfort those who are hurting, accompany those who are alone, heal those who are sick, provide for all who hunger all th and thirst, console the bereaved, bring joy to the sorrowful, and attend to all who call on you, especially Beverly, Jerry, Susan, Carol, Lisa, Eddie, Carol, Don, John, Sharon, May, Robin, Marcy, Aaron, Joanne, Elaine, Shay, Sharon, Hannah, Mike, Lorraine, Bill, Mike, Kerry, Carol, Kathy, Mary Lou, and Christine. Hear us, O oh God. You place us within communities for mutual support and love. Reveal yourself to us in worship, fellowship, and ministry with our neighbors. Provide for feeding ministry and food banks in our area that we share your abundance with all who hunger. Hear us, O oh God. You have placed before us examples of faithful living who have witnessed to your promises throughout time and space. Rouse us by their lives of service and dedication to be your hands and feet in this world. Hear us, O oh God. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, in the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share with one another a sign of God's peace among us.
let us pray. Merciful God, as grains of wheat scattered upon the hills were gathered together to become one bread, so let your church be gathered together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. For yours is the glory through Jesus Christ now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and grace. It is indeed right, our duty and joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God through our Savior, Jesus, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. holy and mighty, holy and immortal. We praise and glorify you. We worship and adore you. You formed the earth from chaos. You encircled the globe with air. You created fire for warmth and light. You nourished the lands with water. You molded us into your image and with mercy higher than the mountains, with grace deeper than the seas. You bless the Israelites and cherish them as your own. That also we, as strange and dying, might be adopted to live in your spirit. You called us through the life and death of Jesus. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Together as the body of Christ, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your son, the firstborn of your new creation. We remember his life lived for others and his death and resurre resurrection, which renews the face of the earth. We await his coming when with the world made perfect through your wisdom, all our sins and sorrows will be no more. Amen. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, holy and merciful and holy and compassionate, send upon us and on this meal the gift of your Holy Spirit, whose breath revives us for life, whose fire rise, rouses us to love, Enfold in your arms all who share this holy food. Nurture in us the fruits of the Spirit, that we may be a living tree, sharing our bounty with all the world. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy and benevolent God, receive our praise and petitions as Jesus received the cry of the needy, and fill us with your blessing. Until needy no longer and bound to you in love, we feast forever in the triumph of the Lamb, through whom all glory and honor is yours, O God, O living one, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet, for all is now ready. given for you, Mary. Now the body of Christ given for you. Tom, the body of Christ given for you. You okay? May the body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Herald the body of Christ given for you. Valerie, the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you, Jack. Of the body of Christ given for you. Okay, the body of Christ given for you. Pat, the body of Christ given for you. Okay, the body of Christ given for you. Hannah, okay, the body of Christ given for you. John, the body of Christ given for you.
Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this, the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. As you're leaving, uh, let me take another minute of your time. I did not announce before and just want to remind you now, next Sunday will be the last Sunday. Earl will be making coffee for us at the coffee hour. So cheers. <laughs> no, so it means we don't have to stop at Dunkin' Donuts on our way. Um, no, please, everyone be with us next Sunday. Bring a dish and share the dinner. It should be a great time. Thank you.